In module 3, we gave examples of modeling hardware circuits using new SMV. In this module, we will focus on different kinds of parallel systems. In other words, concurrent systems. We will start by describing two kinds of parallel systems, synchronous and asynchronous. We will understand each of them through examples. The content in this part of the module is taken from the lecture slides of Professor Supratik Chakraborty, IIT Bombay. Here is an example of a road intersection with two traffic light signals, light L1 and L2. Light L1 is described by the transition system here. It has three states, red, yellow, green. Similarly, the traffic light L2 is represented by this transition system with the same set of states, red, yellow, green. However, they are interacting. Light L1, if it is in red, can go to yellow only if L2 is currently in its red state. Similarly, L2, if it is red, it can go to yellow only if L1 is in its red state. Here are some other specifications. If a light is red, it can stay red for an arbitrary period. If the light goes yellow, it should become green within one cycle. What does that mean? The next transition that L1 takes needs to be green. If it is green, then the light can stay green for an arbitrary period. Let us now try to write new SMB code for this system of traffic lights. We define a module light which takes as input the state of the other light. Module light has variables state. State can take three values red, yellow, green denoted by R, Y, G. The initial value of state is R. Let us now define the transitions. The next value of state is given as follows. If the current value of state is R and the state of the other light is R as well, then the light can either stay in red or it can move to yellow. This R is to denote the fact that it can stay red for an arbitrary period. Since other is R, it can also go to yellow. If the current state is yellow, then the next transition that it takes should make it green. If the state is green, it can either stay green or it can go to red. In all other cases, there is no change in the state. This is the module light. How do we use this module in module main? We define two variables TL1, TL2 of type light. TL1 is instantiated with TL2.state. TL2 is instantiated with TL1.state. This is the same as the NAND example which we saw in the last module. So what would the states of the transition system defined by this code be? We need to look at the variables in module main. There are two variables TL1 and TL2. TL1 is of type light which has a variable state. TL2 is again a variable of type light which has a variable state. So a state of this combined transition system will consist of the state of traffic light 1 and the state of traffic light 2. Each time we take the next transition, both TL1 and TL2 would move. That means this is a synchronous composition. In every unit, both TL1 and TL2 change their state. In such a case, what will happen? Let us see. We start with TL1 dot state and TL2 dot state being red. In the next unit, 
what are the possible transitions? Since TL2 dot red is true, TL1 can indeed take the transition to yellow. Similarly, since TL1 is red, TL2 can indeed satisfy this condition and take the transition to yellow. We reach a state where both the lights are yellow. Once they are in this state, in the next transition, both of them can become green. This is a scenario which we did not want. This is making both the lights become green simultaneously. How do we get rid of this behavior? This does not model the system that we want. In our system, each of the lights moves separately. At a time, only one of the lights should take the transition. How can we model such systems using new SMV? Firstly, such systems are said to be asynchronous. They are not this just means that they are not synchronized. That means in every unit, it, it is not necessary that both of them should simultaneously take the next transition. In the next unit, either light 1 can move or light 2 can move. To model such scenario, we will define TL1 to be a process light of TL2 dot state. This is the same. However, we define it with the keyword process. Similarly, TL2 is defined as process light of TL1 dot state. What happens when we define it this way? The initial state is going to be the same. Both of them are in red. In the next step, one of the lights is chosen to take its next transition. Here, light 1 is chosen to take the next transition. Since light 2 is red, light 1 can indeed move to yellow. In this state, yet again, one of the lights is chosen to take the next transition. Suppose we choose this. It can go to green and the other light stays in the same state. Again, we can choose one of the lights to take the next transition. Here again, we choose light 1, it moves to red. Once again, we are in the state where both of them are red. Now, the next step could be a choice between light 1 and light 2. Here, we have described the situation where light 2 takes the next transition. Since light 1 is red, it can move to yellow. Again, here we choose light 2 to take the next transition. It becomes green and so on. In such a case, only one light can become green at a time. Let us try to run this example using our tool. Here is the code. See, we have written TL1 to be process light of TL2.state. TL2 is process light TL1.state. Let me run this example. When you run it, you will get warnings which say that processes are still supported but deprecated. In the future, processes may no longer be supported. However, we will use this version of new SMV. The goal is to just understand the idea behind asynchronous composition and the use of processes. If not new SMV, there are other tools which support asynchronous composition like spin. The ideas are going to be the same. So as long as you understand this, you can use any tool that can support asynchronous composition. Let us come back to this example. Let us check if all the executions satisfy the condition that both the lights are not green at the same time. How do we check this? If you remember, we used the requirement F in the last module. We will use that again. We want to check that in every execution, it is not the case that there is a state where both the lights are green. New SMB says that 
the specification is indeed true. Let us now try to simulate and understand what happens inside the transition system. For a start, what are the reachable states? There are eight, sorry, there are four states given by traffic light one is red, two is green, both are red, first one is red and the other is yellow. First one is green and the other red. First one is yellow and the other red. So there is no state where both are green. Let me now pick an initial state. There is only one initial state where both are red. Let us now simulate for some steps to understand what happens inside. We started with both of them being red. Now, let me explain the available states. There are actually three processes. TL1 is a process, TL2 is a process, and the main module is also considered to be a process. So main.running is just written as running. If from this state where both are red, the selected process is TL2, then TL2 state changes. See, TL2 dot state becomes yellow. Now, what is this state? Rather, let us see. If TL1 is the process, then we know that process 1 can still stay in red. So that is what it has chosen. This state is given by TL2 dot state equal to R and TL1 dot state equal to R. Process 1 has been selected and process 1 has chosen to stay red. There is another way of getting the same process where the process selected is main, in which case both TL1 and TL2 do not change their states. In this example, whenever main is selected, there would not be any change in the state. However, there could be examples where main has other variables and those variables can change their values. The other way of getting the state RR is when TL2 is selected, but TL2 chooses to stay red. I hope this is clear. Now, what is the other state? From RR, the other possible state is when TL1 dot state is Y and TL2 dot state is R. Since it is not written here, you have to see the previous state. That is what it means. TL2 dot state is R. This is obtained when TL1 is chosen and it chooses to go to the yellow state. Let me choose this state. Now, from TL1 dot state equal to Y and TL2 dot state equal to R, from Y R, what are the possible successes? If TL1 is chosen, it cannot stay in yellow, it will become green. That is this state. The other choice is if TL2 is selected, since TL1 is yellow, TL2 dot state will remain in red. If main is selected, there is no change in the state. So we get back to TL1 dot state equal to Y and TL2 dot state equal to R. You can continue this and understand how the successor transitions are determined. Each time one of the processes is selected, either main, TL2 or TL1. Let me summarize this idea of synchronous versus asynchronous systems. Synchronous modules are defined this way. You have a variable and just instantiate it using the module that you want. For asynchronous composition, you need to have the keyword process before the instantiation. When the modules are composed in a synchronous way, all assignments to all modules are made simultaneously in the next step. Such a composition is suitable when all the modules are synchronized to a global clock. 
the case of the counter and hardware circuit which we saw in the previous module fits well with synchronous composition. In the case of asynchronous composition, the execution of modules is interleaved. At a time, only one module executes and the choice of the next module to be executed is non-deterministic. This kind of a composition is suitable when no assumptions can be made about the communication delay between modules. There is no single global clock. Each of them works with its own clock and we cannot make assumptions about the communication delay between the modules. This brings us to the end of the first part. We will now consider mutual exclusion. Recall that when two programs having a shared resource are running in parallel, the mutual exclusion rule demands that they cannot access the shared resource simultaneously. Sections of the program where the shared resource is accessed are called critical sections. Mutual exclusion in other words demands that the two programs cannot be in their critical section simultaneously. Here is a model of two parallel programs. To ensure mutual exclusion, there is an extra global variable y which can be either 0 or 1. Each program can be in four states. It starts with a non-critical state. When it wants to access a critical section, it goes into a wait state. In the wait state, it can enter the critical section if the value of this global variable y is bigger than 0. When it enters, it decrements the value of y by 1. It can stay in its critical section as long as it wants. And when it's about to leave, it goes into an exiting state. From the exiting state, it goes back to the non-critical state. In the process, it increases the value of y by 1. Program 2 is identical. Let us now try to write the code for these programs in new SMV and check if they can be in their critical sections simultaneously. Let me write the new SMV code from scratch. Let us define a module called thread which takes as input a variable y. It has three locations. So we define a variable location. It can take three values, either non-critical, sorry, it can take four values, non-critical, waiting, exiting, and critical. What are the assignments? The initial value of location is non-critical. The next of location is determined as follows. If location is non-critical, the next location can either be non-critical or it can go to the waiting state. If location is wait and the value of y is bigger than 0, then it can go to the critical state. If location is critical, then it can either stay in critical or it can go to the exit state. And in the exit, if location is exit, 
it goes to the non critical state what about y next of y is determined as follows if location is weight then the value of y is decremented to y minus 1 so location is weight and y is bigger than 0 then you make it y minus 1 if location is exit then we make it y plus 1 how do we use this module thread in module main we define the following variables we need to define a variable y let us give it a separate name let's call it say y main it can take the values 0 and 1 there are two threads so program 1 is defined as process thread of y main program 2 is again defined as process thread of y main we need to assign the initial value of y main is true which is 1 let us now execute this code in new SMV. New SMV minus int the name of the file and then we say go ignore the warnings but there seems to be an error it says that case conditions are not exhausted yes so we need to write If all these are not satisfied, stay in the same location. Similarly, if all these are not satisfied, do not change the value of y. Let us now run the new code. There seems to be another error. It says that cannot assign value 2 to variable y main. We need to check this condition. And y is strictly less than rather y equal to 0. Then make it y plus 1. Let us now run it. Yes, we are successful. Let us now check the requirement that in all executions, program 1 and program 2 cannot be in their critical sections simultaneously. In all executions, it is not the case that there exists a state where program 1 dot location is C and program 2 dot location is C and the specification is true let us now simulate it for a certain number of steps to understand what happens inside the initial state is when y main is 1 Program 1 is in non-critical location. Program 2 is in non-critical location. From the first location, from the first state, it can go to a state where program 2 has gone to waiting if process 2, rather program 2, is selected to move forward. It can go to a state where both of them are non-critical. This is possible if the process selected is 
program 1 or program 2 and they choose to stay in the same state. The other possibility is if the main process is selected, then we will still get to the same state. I mean, we have essentially not changed state. Both program 1.location is nc and program 2.location is nc. If program 1.location is w and program 2.location is nc, this means that the process selected is 1 and it has gone to waiting. Let me choose 4. Now, from, from where, from the state W for program 1 and NC for program 2, we can move to the following states. Either the first location goes into the critical section or both of them come to wait or program 1 stays in wait and program 2 stays in non-critical. Yes, for each of these states there is an explanation as to which process is selected for the next transition. You can keep experimenting with this. We have therefore seen a demo of a mutual exclusion example. In this module we have seen two things synchronous versus asynchronous systems and a demo of mutual exclusion. We will now see an example of a system of three parallel programs. We had seen this example in module 4 of unit 1. The first program checks if x is less than 200 and increments x as long as x is less than 200. This is the transition system corresponding, rather this is the program graph corresponding, this is the program graph corresponding to this program. Two locations L1 and L2, L1 to L2 on x less than 200, L2 to L1 on L2 to L1 will set x to x plus 1. The second program decrements x as long as it is strictly bigger than 0 and the last program checks if x equals 200 and resets it to 0. We want to know if the value of x stays positive always. Let us now write the new SMV code for this system. The first program takes as input an integer x, I will call it x1. It has two locations, so I define a variable with name location. It can take values l1, l2. And what are the assignments? From l1, it can go to l2 if x is less than 200. From L2, it can go to L1. In the process, it increments x to x plus 1. Let's write that. Init of location is L1. Next of location is defined as follows. If location is L1 and x1 is less than 200, then go to L2. If location is L2, then the next value of location changes to L1. In all other cases, do not change the location. What about the value of the integer? The next of x1 is determined as follows. If location is L2, then the value of x1 is incremented by 1. In all other cases, do not change its value. 
Let's now write the second program. It takes again as input one variable. Let's call it x2 here. However, we will finally call all of them using the same variable x. We will see that later. Again, there are two locations, m1, m2. How do the transitions look like? From m1 to m2, it goes on x greater than 0. From m2 to m1, it resets, it, it decrements x by 1. So, init of location is m1. Next of location is determined as follows. If location is m1 and x2 is bigger than 0, then the next location is m2. If location is m2, then the next location is m1. In all other cases, do not change location. What about next of x2? If location is m2, then decrease x2 by 1. In all other cases, do not change x2. Now for the final program. It has two locations, n1, n2. What are the transitions? If x is equal to 200, you can go from n1 to n2. In the transition n2 to n1, x is set to 0. Init of location is n1. Next of location is if location is n1 and x3 equals 200, then go to n2. In all other cases, remain wherever you are. What about next of x3? If location is n2, then make it 0. In all other cases, do not change it. Now, is the time for the main module. We will define a variable x. New SMV supports only bounded integers, so we need to give a bound for x. I will give a loose bound saying that my x can range from minus 1000 to 1000. Now we will define three instantiations of these programs. Thread 1 will be process program 1 of x. Thread 2 will be process program 2 of x. And thread 3 will be process program 3 of x. I have sent the same x to all the programs. However, since x is a bounded integer, we need to make a few changes to the conditions in the programs. For example, when we are doing this increment, we should also check that x1 is less than 1000. And when we are doing this decrement, we should check if x2 
is strictly bigger than minus 1000 because we know that x these x's can take values from minus 1000 to plus 1000 only and the, if we do not give these conditions then new smv would complain let us also assign the initial value of x to be 0. Let us now run the code using new smv. It takes a while. And it's done. Let us now check if the value of x is always bigger than or equal to 0. g x bigger than or equal to 0. It says it is false and it has given us an execution with 407 states. Let us now try to understand what is happening. So let's get first to the beginning of this execution. Yeah. So the count example starts with the initial state where location of thread 1 is L1, thread 2 is an M1, thread 3 is an N1 and the value of X is 0. Now the value of x is incremented by thread 1 repeatedly for certain amount of steps. So x is incremented. Process 1 goes from L1, L2, L1, L2 and so on and in and x is getting incremented till x reaches 200 I guess. Let us check it. If you see it's the same L1, L2, L1, L2, L1, L2, x is becoming 157, 159. Yes, X has become 198, 199 and now there is a slight change. Process 2 is selected and it goes into M2. So currently the states are L2, M2 and N1. Process 1 is selected, it goes to L1 and increments x by 200. Right now the state is thread 1 is L1, thread 2 is M2, thread 3 is N1 and the value of x is 200. So now thread 3 can execute because there was a condition from going to go from N1 to N2, it needed the value of x to be 200. So right now thread 3 is in location N2. It can reset its value to 0 once it's in N2 and then it should change back to N1. So the value of x becomes 0. However, there is no change to the value of the location of thread 3. Normally, it should have gone to N1. Let us now check the code. Right, we have missed in the code to say that if location is N2 and sorry, if location is N2, you need to go to N1. We can run it with this now. However, there should be no change to the counter example. Let us first understand this counter example. It goes to 0 and then thread 2 which is in M2 decrements it by 1 
and hence the value of x becomes minus 1. So this is the situation. Let us now run the corrected code. The requirement g x bigger than or equal to 0 should be false even now and we should be getting a similar counter example. Let us check it. Check LTL spec minus p g of x bigger than or equal to 0. It's false and we seem to have gotten the same example now with the corrected state as well. Thread 3 dot location goes from N2 to N1 when X is set to 0. Notice that it is possible to write models erroneously. To some extent, these simulations will help you identify the errors while writing the models. However, there is some manual responsibility involved in writing correct models. New SMB will just ensure that if you give a model, and give a requirement, it will check if that requirement is true on that model. This brings us to the end of this module. We have seen three things. The first was an example of synchronous versus asynchronous systems. Secondly, we saw an example of mutual exclusion. We checked it using new SMV. And finally, we saw an example of concurrent programs. We have seen how new SMV can be used to check requirements on models of these systems.